Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to show you what equipotential surfaces look like for a condition where the electric field is not constant. Remember the previous example, we had the electric field between capacitor plates, so the electric field was the same everywhere. But in this case, we have a point charge called Q, and we have an electric field emanating away from that point charge. And you can see here that the equipotential surfaces drawn in red are spheres around the charge. And as you go out, since the electric field gets weaker and weaker and weaker as you go further out, the distances between equipotential surfaces will also increase because if the distance between them represent a fixed amount of change in the potential, you can see that you have to travel a greater distance through a weaker field to get the similar kind of change in the potential. So these dashed lines represent spheres around the charge at the center. So going back to the equation that represents the electric field as a function of distance, this is right here, and realizing that when the electric field is constant, the relation between electric field and potential is E equals V over R, or V equals E times R. Again, that's under constant conditions, constant electric field conditions. In, an, in a varying electric field condition, we have to take this equation and write it as a differential, where E is represented by this equation right there. So let's write that. Let's write dV is equal to minus that would then be kq over r squared dr. The reason why we need the minus there is because as you go further out, as r increases, potential decreases. So there's an inverse relationship, so to speak, uh, where if, q, if uh, distance, if r gets bigger, potential gets smaller. And that's why we need the negative sign there. All right, now what we need to do is integrate. We can then say that the change in potential and again, whenever we talk about the potential around a point charge like that, we assume that at infinity, at infinity, the potential is equal to zero. That's as a standard. And using that, we then find the difference in the potential, the delta V, the difference in potential from one location to another. So if we want to know what the potential is at this point right there, we can say relative to, uh, relative to the infinity, a point at infinity, we can find it as such. We say this is equal to the integral of all the dv's going from infinity to some distance away from the center. So let's call this distance away from the center, let's call it r. So r is the distance from the center, like that. And so we can put r on it like that. And so this would be equal to minus kq, these are just constants, we can take an outside the integral sign, times the integral of 1 over r squared dr, going from infinity to some fixed point r away from the charge. Then if we integrate that, we get the following. This is equal to minus kq times 1 over r to the minus 1. And actually, let me, let me do one more step in between because that will make it easier to see. Let me write it like this. Minus kq times the integral from infinity to r of r to the minus 2 dr. If you write it like that, it's just easier to see how we integrate that. So now we can go ahead and integrate. So the difference in potential from infinity to r, so that's going from infinity to r, how does the potential change? This is equal to minus kq. Now when we do the integral, we add 1 to the exponent, so that would be r to the minus 1 over the new exponent, evaluated from infinity to r. Now let's simplify that. Well, this minus can cancel out that minus, so we end up with kq and 1 over r evaluated from infinity to r. So when we plug in the upper limit, we get the following result. This would be equal to k times q, 1 over r minus 1 over the lower limit infinity. And of course, 1 over infinity is equal to 0. So finally, we can say that the change in potential, when we go from infinity to some position, oop, let me write it like this, to some position r, that's equal to k q over r, and of course you recognize this as a general equation of the potential around the point charge. Now the reason why I went to this exercise is to show you how this really represents that the certain potential will be a function of a certain distance away. So for example, if we make r bigger, potential will be smaller. When we make r smaller, potential will be bigger. Also, how much do we have to move, for example, to double our potential? So let's say that we have our potential at r, and let's, um, let's put r at some value. So let's say delta v will be equal to um, kq 
Q over R, whatever that happens to be. So let's say that's 100 volts. Let's say this happens to be 100 volts. How far do I have to now to move for that to be half the potential? So I will have to move further out. So I want to find another equipotential surface that now represents half the voltage. How much farther do I have to go? Well, to, for delta V to be half of that, I need R to be twice as much. So in that case, I need delta V is equal to KQ time, divided by 2R. And of course, divide that by 2, we get 50 volts. So now I'm down to half the voltage than what I had before. If I now want to go to half of half, how far do I have to go out now? Well, if I want to get this now down to 25 volts, then I have to go do this. The delta V is equal to K. Q divided by 4R, and that would now be 25 volts. So here we have a good example. Let's say that, um, let me change this just a little bit. Let's say that if we go to the first circle right here, this distance here represents R, and then that means that this circle would represent an equipotential voltage of 100 volts for this circle right there, or for this, not circle, it's of course a spherical shell. If I now go out twice as far, so this would be 1R, so now if I go out 2R, at that point, you can see now that this would be 50 volts. So this equipotential surface would be 50 volts. And now if I want to go out to the point where it's 25 volts, now I have to go 4R away. So this would be distance of 4R. And now we get to a point where the surface would now represent 25 volts. Now, how far would I have to go for this, to find the surface where it would now be half of that, would be 12 and a half volts. I would now have to go 8R away. So 8R would be quite a distance away, like right out here somewhere. This would be 8R. And you can see that I have to go then draw a new equipotential surface way out here somewhere that would then represent the point at which it's 12.5 volts. Then how far do I need to go for, before the potential is half of that, 6.25 volts? I would now have to go out 16R and so forth. So you can see that in this case, the equipotential surface will be farther and farther apart each time when I want to go half the voltage that I had before which gives you kind of a good feel for what equipotential potential surfaces are and how to apply it to an example like this. That's how we do that.